anterior to the flexor digitorum profundus. These two muscles are the only muscles in the forearm that are innervated by the ulnar nerve, which has branches supplying them as it travels down the forearm. Note that the ulnar nerve only supplies the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus, as the lateral half is supplied by the median nerve. The ulnar nerve also gets closer to the ulnar artery as it moves distally. The palmar cutaneous branch branches off from the main nerve proximal to the wrist, where it penetrates the muscle and the deep fascia to provide sensory innervation to the palm. Specifically, it innervates the ulnar side of the palm. Then, as the main ulnar nerve arrives at the wrist joint, a dorsal branch branches off, penetrating deep to the flexor carpi ulnaris and the deep fascia to the dorsal side of the hand, where it provides sensory innervation to the ulnar side of the dorsum, as well as the skin overlying the fifth digit and the medial half of the fourth digit. Back in the main ulnar nerve, it continues to travel over the palmar side of the hand with the ulnar artery over the flexor rectinaculum. Here, both the artery and the nerve travel through a structure called the Guillon's canal. This canal is formed by many structures, such as the flexor retinaculum as its floor, the medial wall formed by the pisiform bone, the lateral wall formed by the hook of the hamate, and the roof formed by the palmar carpal ligament, which is not shown here. As the nerve passes through the Guillon's canal, it is divided into superficial and deep branches. The superficial branches provide innervation to the fifth digit and the medial half of the fourth digit, whereas the deep branch innervates muscles such as the adductor pollicis, the flexor pollicis brevis, the three thenal muscles including the abductor digiti minimi, the flexor digiti minimi, and the opponens digiti minimi. Finally, it also innervates the interossei muscles and the third and fourth lumbricals. <laughs> 